all of us together that we are all sitting here and um, from various backgrounds in life the one thing that has brought us all together is Srila Prabhupada his um, dedicated life to follow the instructions of his spiritual master his commitment and his belief his strong belief in the words of the scriptures and uh, also the words of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu where the prediction was that every town and village in the world will chant the holy name of Krishna so there are many things which can be said but um, this particular aspect that Srila Prabhupada you know, when he heard this he took it in a very different way it wasn't a very narrowed vision as um, we've heard that his god brothers though they, this instruction to preach was actually from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur to everyone but that vision which he had, which he demonstrated personally in his life, he was instrumental in opening 64 mathas all over India. And uh, that was the essence, as we have heard, that preaching is the essence. The four pillars on which this whole ISKCON society is built upon is books are the braces, preaching is the essence. And utility is the principle and purity is the force. So, preaching is the essence. This instruction was for everyone. But Srila Prabhupada took it so sincerely to his heart that um, though he was in the Grahast Ashram and he was supporting the temple from outside as a Grahastha, and um, he actually demonstrated that, you know, like this instruction was never lost on him. He carried this instruction. So he was writing, he was writing articles. In fact, I remember recently when I was reading from the Leelamrata that Srila Prabhupada, when he was in Bombay, at that time, as a congregation devotee, he was supporting, but then the devotees inside the Matha, the ashram, wanted him to take more he was now initiated, so they wanted him to take more responsibility. And uh, they had approached Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur that why cannot Abhai Charan, you know, take over the responsibility of the Bombay ashram and head that ashram. And uh, at that time, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had made this comment that let it be, let him remain outside. There will be a time, the time will come when he will perform and he will do everything. Hmm? Right now he was taking care of his family, he was in the Grahastha Ashram. So, this comment coming from Srila Bhakti Siddhant Saraswati Thakur, there was actually a history to this comment because he had seen Srila Prabhupada uh, when Srila Prabhupada had written that glorification on uh, the appearance day of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, which, which had been so much appreciated by him that he had uh, told his disciples that whatever he writes, hmm, you should publish. Whatever he writes, everything, you know, you should publish. So he knew the ability which was there and... Um, he knew that he, you know, he has a responsibility. So he said that time will come. So as time passed, and Srila Prabhupada, you know, after the first instruction and the last instruction was, you know, actually the same from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So there was no difference. The first time when he met him in 1922, on the rooftop, Ulta Danga, he said, why don't you preach this science of 
Krishna consciousness to the English speaking world. And the last instruction was also the same when he had written in 1936, Srila Prabhupada had written to his spiritual master that um, I am a grahastha, you have so many wonderful, you know, like uh, disciples who are rendering so much services to you, I am unable to do. So this was, he was expressing his heart to his spiritual master and uh, November, middle of November, Srila Prabhupada had written and in December, he got a reply to his letter. And the reply, in that reply, it was the same instruction. It was the same instruction which he was given in 1922. That, you know, you should take up this, the uh, responsibility of, you know, like preaching to the English-speaking world. So Srila Prabhupada, after his spiritual master's departure, um, that separation which we, he was feeling from his spiritual master, he felt solace in always meditating on his spiritual master and meditating on the instructions which he had received. And thus we see his voyage to America with very hard struggle. It wasn't very easy for him to travel to the US and uh, there was a life of preparation before going to the US also when after you know having entered the Vanaprastha ashram then he entered the sannyas ashram. So all those years that he spent in Vrindavan and uh, quite some time in Delhi also was actually a time in preparation for this voyage but overall he never forgot that instruction. So that strong faith which he had, very strong faith which he had in his spiritual master, in the words of his spiritual master, and uh, that conviction took him to... So this morning also when we were driving here, I was just discussing with Narari Prabhu the two things that very stood out so much in Srila Prabhupada is one, his strong faith, and then his quality of surrender. His quality of surrender, there's so much to learn. How he gave up everything to serve the mission of his spiritual master, to serve the instructions. It is very, very difficult, you know, like, um, may not be, you know, uh, so much, uh, uh, you know, relatable when you are young, but, you know, once you cross a certain age, and then you see how, you know, the body does not completely support. At that age then, you know, to travel alone without any resources, just three books, three trunk loads of Srimad Bhagavatam, to travel and go to a different country with a different culture, totally. Hmm? It requires real courage. It requires not only courage, I mean, here the point that, you know, like we can meditate on is how, you know, the quality of surrender. He was completely surrendered. He was totally dependent on Krishna and his spiritual master. That, you know, he's going there, he's all alone, and all he has is the holy name and uh, those three volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam, the message of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But it shows his quality of surrender. And of course, initially, even there, Prabhupada had this quality. He had this wonderful quality of always thinking very big. He could never think small. So, there also, like when he was sitting in the park in New York on a bench, and then he had the, an elderly person coming and sitting next to him, and he got into that conversation with him. So when he asked, what are you doing here, you know, like in America? So he said, first he expressed that I have come here following the instructions of my spiritual master, that my spiritual master wanted me to preach in English, to the English speaking world. And there he expressed, you know, like he showed that he was able to see a lot of devotees and a lot of temples and, uh, you know, like the movement spreading. And at that time, there was actually nothing. 
there were no devotees and there was no, there were no temples but still that vision of his uh, when he was asked he said it's only time that is separating it, they are all there they are in the unmanifest stage but the time will come when all these things will manifest so that sort of conviction that sort of faith hmm, that uh, shila prabhupad had hmm, there's so much to learn and that came because he was surrendered hmm. he was completely surrendered to his spiritual master and to shri krishna so this is how uh, he was able to preach and um, then initially like um, i was many thoughts come to mind you know like um, during this period also that um, not that devotees will not be tested because something you know the last few days i'm also going through connected uh, that devotees also will be tested just because we have become devotees so we will not be tested it's not like that devotees also will be tested but this test we take it as you know krishna is sending these things so that actually what is krishna desiring for us krishna is desiring that we should not stagnate we should not be at one place we should come closer to him and that closer you know coming closer to krishna is we have to go through these tests and how we respond to these tests hmm? so it's actually you know for us uh um uh, a motivation that you know even for devotees so shila prabhupad had to go through many tests his early days from 1965 september when he landed there if you read from the lilamrita how what a difficult period it was for him all alone you know walking the streets of new york and in the cold winter it gets very very severe the winter is so severe all alone you know walking the streets and chanting and being seen hmm? so just being seen he was able to attract a few and of course he was given opportunities to address hmm? at um, another ashram a bhakti uh, a yoga ashram where he was you know like speaking but even that person felt it as a threat you know they, he will take away all he will poach and take away all my followers so he went through many many challenges but by krishna's mercy you know like he he actually came out successful going through all those challenges and then krishna krishna you know like awarded him everything and then he got followers which later on they became disciples and these disciples also then you know like they imbibed that quality from shila prabhupada actually you know how just look at their backgrounds the early followers and you know like disciples of shila prabhupada from what background they came and how they surrendered and gave up their life and that too at a very young age it was not that you know like like in india the thought was when shila prabhupada tried uh, and he attempted to start the movement here they said swami ji leave us alone my son is so young now he has so many responsibilities let him you know like gain knowledge and gain wealth and you know everything once he stabilizes maybe you know i mean that was the thought process in india when you are old and you are not able to do anything then you can take up to devotional life but here we see in the west hmm, such youngsters how they were so much inspired so much inspiration they got from shila prabhupada that they also dedicated their lives completely and it's not this like one or two like you know and the moment once it started then it it spread like anything hmm? so fast and there's a rec- i mean i heard a class in shridham mayapur i was physically present there so one of shila prabhupada's disciples was addressing in that class and one point which he made there was if you take the history of the various movements that have started over many centuries many centuries not recently many centuries and in fact uh, sitting on that vyasasan that prabhupada disciple had mentioned about you know the acharyas whom we speak about like you know ramanuja acharya madhva acharya to reach you know at this stage they have taken a long period but iskon 
the achievements that you know like uh, iskon has uh, reached you know in such a short period is unparalleled that is what i heard in the class that in a span of just 50 years hmm, from where we were to where we are today you know a worldwide movement with such big huge following hmm, and um opening temples making more devotees and the preaching in fact it is appreciated by the other sampradayas also we have seen how the other sampradayas also there's so much of appreciation for shri prabhupa so this again you know takes me back i connect this point with uh, his holiness giriraj swami when he was addressing and i had made this point earlier that you know once there were these devotees from the shri sampradaya when they came to chopati temple in bombay and maharaj happened to be there and you know like they wanted to speak and the maharaj you know was available so they said uh, like first of all they asked who is prabhupan so what they had in mind was something different you know it was difficult for maharaj to understand in what context are they asking who is prabhupan and when um, his holiness giriraj maharaj you know like tried to ask them you know okay you elaborate i mean he gave him answer okay, you know he's a disciple of bhakti siddhant saraswati maharaj who dedicated his life he said no no not like that and then they gave that we know that ramanuja acharya you know like is empowered he's you know like expansion so like that who is prabhupada they wanted to know so giriraj swami had answered that you know the same question when asked from shila prabhupada shila prabhupada said if i tell you you will all faint so don't <laughs> he didn't reveal though hmm. so this was spoken by giriraj swami and um you know like how he was able to achieve all this there was one more question which was asked one is who is the prabhupad and uh, anyway both were very esoteric questions very very esoteric. that means the point i'm trying to make is that so much of appreciation even from the other sampradayas for shri the prabhupad hmm. to you know like um, the way he has spread the holy name the sanatan dharma we speak of the sanatan dharma how you know he has spread the sanatan dharma hmm. and uh, how people from various walks of life with so many different backgrounds hmm. yes the other point uh, was like you know most of the previous acharyas hmm, they were focused like you know they were preaching in india to indians but shila prabhupada it didn't happen like that with him he was not preaching in india to indians you know the challenge was for him to speak to people who are not you know not having this background the vedic you know culture and uh, who have their own culture and to preach and to convince them okay you know this path of krishna consciousness Hmm. this is actually what you know for kali yuga where you know like it says that the holy name of krishna will be you know chanted so to carry that message and to carry that conviction and go out and preach hmm. so shila, definitely you know with all these things one thing also you know which is very becoming very evident to us is that shila prabhupada is definitely empowered without having been empowered nobody can you know achieve what he has achieved and his empowerment came from his spiritual master his spiritual master actually empowered him when he saw the spark within him then it was fanned by his spiritual master so these are you know like wonderful qualities which we can remember about shila propa and uh, shila propa did the same thing just like he was empowered then he further went and empowered his disciples because without shila propa the empowering imagine a 21 22 year old you know accepting sanyas and then you know dedicating his life and then serving and then being instrumental in carrying the message forward and preaching and you know going forward like that so in turn shila propad empowered his disciples also and i mean i can remember you know like um, ambarish prabhu sitting in propad's room 
And you know, when the talk was going on about you know, a big temple in Mayapur, and then he just happened to be in the room, and then you know, Prabhupada looked at him and he said, maybe you can build that temple. So, you know, like, it's just that, you know, and he was instrumental, definitely. He is instrumental. He gave the seed capital for the big TOVP temple, which is coming up in Mayapur. Without him giving, we were talking, we were planning, and this has been going on for many years now. We were not even able to, you know, like identify which is the place where the temple will come. There used to be so many big discussions at various meetings about this. But anyway, it happened. So we can see, just like that, you know, how Srila Prabhupada further empowered his disciples also. And his disciples carried the baton. And uh, they have been doing wonderful services. Even now we can see. So this is how the parampara, mm, not only the knowledge comes in parampara, but also the empowerment comes in parampara. So we have to be faithful mm, to our spiritual master to Srila Prabhupada and the previous Acharyas and thereby offer ourselves just as merely an instrument. If we offer ourselves as an instrument, not that we have any abilities. Our abilities will manifest once we have the blessings of them. You know, Once we are blessed by them, all the abilities will manifest. So we have to, you know, like learn from Srila Prabhupada's life, how he dedicated himself completely to the mission and how his followers are now completely dedicating themselves and how this is an opportunity for us also, you know, to take this and take it forward, this moment. I was going to read from Leela but I just ex tempo. Actually, I didn't know I was speaking today, you know, Suvarnagor so Prabhu told me we have 20 minutes so speak something so you know thoughts which came to my mind but it's a day we appreciate what we have received from Srila Prabhupada and um, Srila Prabhupada another thing which you know like um, is he yeah for us mm, to sustain our Krishna consciousness, to progress in our Krishna consciousness, there's one thing which is very important, which stands out. That is, always remain connected with ISKCON. Always remain within ISKCON. Because with ISKCON is considered as Srila Prabhupada's body, right? So if we remain within that, we will always be protected. We, you know, sometimes, Sometimes it happens with some devotees that due to some misunderstandings, you know, they sort of become aloof. So actually, you know, such devotees should be helped. They should not, you know, go deep into that aloofness and, you know, become separated. They should be helped by somebody, you know, like uh, with a larger heart and, you know. So because Srila Prabhupada wanted us then, he wanted us to remain within his con and uh, together. So there will be difference. The, every year, the whole theme of the Mayapur, the, you know, the Gaur Purnima festival, when all the GBCs come together, the main theme is unity and diversity. How we, we are diverse, we are, you know, individuals, and we will have our own, you know, like um, thinking and ways of looking at things, perceptions may be different. But if we have a common, a goal, like a, a kendra, a, a bindu, you know, and if our goal is to serve that, you know, bindu, the common, you know, like the goal, then though being, you know, having different perceptions and different, uh, you know, outlook toward things, but we can still be together and serve. So, we have to remain within ISKCON, and to remain within ISKCON, we have to, you know, like, um, have, you know, like, ISKCON actually offers wonderful opportunity. I don't know why we are all here. We are all here because something is 
you know, like attracting us. The holy name attracted us, the philosophy has attracted us, the instructions, and it has changed our life. Each of us can, you know, like perceive that in their own life. What my life was previously and what it is today. Actually, you know, if we take individually and interview every person, how you came to Krishna consciousness by itself will make, you know, wonderful reading. And you can write volumes and volumes of books because the number of devotees that are there and that is, there is so much of variety in of how devotees have come to Krishna consciousness. Everyone will have a different experience. Hmm? And uh, so we have to stay within ISKCON, we have to serve this moment and uh, we have to remain loyal to Srila Prabhupada. Follow, you know, whatever he has given us. He has given us everything. We just have to accept it. One is we have to accept what he has given us. And accept it with an open heart. Whatever he has given us, if we can accept it with an open heart. And uh, follow. We may not be able to follow everything. But at least attempt to follow something. And remain in the association of devotees. And feel protected thereby. If you remain in the association of devotees, you will feel protected. So this way, I'm supposed to speak of Prabhupada, but I'm giving a class actually. <laughs> but all these qualities have been demonstrated by Srila Prabhupada. I mean, these are Prabhupada's words that you know how we have to be together. I just opened this page, just random, and uh, it came... To this section where Srila Prabhupada is talking about, we shall call our society is gone. Just randomly, I just opened. And Prabhupada laughed playfully when he, had, when he first coined the acronym. In fact, it says that you know he had initiated the legal work of incorporating, even when you know the matchless gift was not even there, he was still living in the Bavari. And that's how, you know, Prabhupada was a visionary, you know, always thinking ahead. So while he was still in, living in the Bhavari, he had th thought about this. You know, they will start a society and he will call it the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, and um, a friend, it appeared in letters to India, had said, uh, a friend had suggested a title that would sound more familiar to Westerners. The friend had suggested that International Society for God Consciousness would be better for Westerners. But Prabhupada had insisted, no, Krishna Consciousness. God was a vague term. It was very vague. Whereas Krishna was exact and scientific. So this, this movement is very scientific. When you speak of Krishna consciousness, you know, we keep saying this is a very scientific movement. Here we learn the science of Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much for this opportunity.